your very young and very pretty wife worked in mm -hmm. Folsom Prison. My husband looked at him and said, if my wife gets a job in Folsom Prison, and if she accepts the job in Folsom Prison, then she has my blessings and my support. And the chief was very happy with this answer. He then took me inside for the interview. The room was packed with people, and I really, even today, don't know who the people were, but there were four mm -hmm. senators there for the interview. And they asked me <coughs> questions that today you will never ask a lady applicant. I was quite comfortable, and I was just concentrating on two main people, and one was the chief medical officer, and one was the chief psychiatrist and the chief psychologist who were asking me all the questions. I answered the questions professionally, and I knew in my heart that they were impressed. I came out, and I told my husband, I think I've done very well. And he said, okay, and we went home. And within less than three days, we get a call, and I was offered a job at Folsom Prison. Now, the reality hit me. My, by sheer grace, my parents were visiting me from India, and I wanted them involved before I made this momentous decision. I did a very unorthodox thing with no worries. I just picked up the phone and called my chief medical officer, and I told him, I need for you to meet my parents before I make my decision. And I want you to meet them not in prison, but in your private practice office in the evening after duty hours. He said, okay. He agreed. I took my parents to his office. He, they met my parents, and my parents were wonderfully impressed with this gentleman. On the way back, my mom told me, baby, you should accept the job. And that was it. So I said, okay, I'll think about it for tomorrow morning and then I'll call him and let him know that I'm going to take the job. So the next morning, after a lot of thinking, I said, okay, mom, I'm going to call up and tell him I'm accepting the job and I did, I accepted the job. Now, at that moment, how did I feel? I was terrified working at Folsom Prison. But I was also excited at the challenge that was there in front of me. And now I understand that if a challenge both excites and frightens you at the same time, it probably means that you should accept the challenge. And I did. And my mother sensed that I was fearful and she said, Baby, I'm going to tell you something that will serve as a mantra for you, not only in Folsom Prison, but also throughout your life. And she said, you were made to do hard and difficult things and face challenges. You need to believe in yourself, in your abilities, and in your talents. And know that there's a power within you which is much greater than any obstacle. That was it. That mantra led, was my guiding light, led me to success, and there, are, there is a book that is just published, Memorializing My Story, and this is the latest article among a slew of articles that appear about me in medical journals, in medical editorials, in newspapers, in news magazines, in television shows, in radio shows. The book is very popular. So now I have one message for all of you. Be bold enough to use your voice. Be brave enough to listen to your heart, to your intuition, and to the universe that will give you the messages. And be strong enough to live a life that you have always imagined. Thank you.